The TSN stiff wall system is implemented in structures to provide both lateral strength and stiffness for the resistance of wind and seismic forces. Lateral strength is needed to resist loads due to wind and earthquake forces, which are the main loads applied to the stiff wall system, while lateral stiffness is needed to prevent the floor and roof from excessively side swaying. In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to design the single stack stiff wall system using the new Steel Smart System version 8.0. To begin from the home screen, we'll open the Strap Brace Share Wall module. We can select between single stack and twin stack designs. Here, we are going to choose the single stack stiff wall template. The template opens with various design input parameters that need to be set. We can assign the criteria and set up the stiff wall geometry and model in any order. Keeping the name as Share Wall 1, in this example, we'll start by adding the number of floors to the geometry and model tabs. The panel width input is applied to all floors while the panel height can be set individually for each floor. To complete the geometry inputs, select the infill stud spacing and the average floor depth for calculation of column loads and capacities. The tributary width of the column is grayed out, but will be an input that can be modified as part of the loads input. Next, we'll enter the design parameters, starting with the design code input. You'll notice there are options for the International Building Code and the Canadian National Building Code. Previous versions of the codes can be selected, back to 2006 and back to 2010 for the IBC and Canadian NBC, respectively. For this example, the 2015 IBC is selected. ASD and LRFD design methods are available for design with the IBC while the LSD method is available for design with the Canadian NBC. For this example, we'll continue with the LRFD design method. We can verify, add, remove, or modify the load combinations for max compression, lateral deflection, and uplift dead load combinations. For this example, we will modify the load combinations to only design for loads that we input, dead loads, wind loads, and seismic loads. Options for considering standard punch outs or web holes and the strength increase of cold work of forming are available, which would be considered for the design of the stiff wall column sections. Next, we can enter member data for each floor. Within the Members tab, we can choose the design member based on the inputs or select check safety to analyze a specific member and bracing configuration. For this example, we'll move forward with the design selection. Next, we can select the wall width, which is determined by the depth of the typical stud framing. We'll select 8 feet and assign a one-piece member layout. Notice there are options for one-piece and built-up. If the built-up option is selected, Steel Smart System will analyze the columns based on specified fastener spacing connecting the piece together. Next, select the minimum diagonal bracing strap member size. The column and diagonal bracing inputs should be set for each floor of the design. Down the left side, you can move into the bracing inputs. Let's close the design data section to clean up our workspace and start by adding the maximum bridging spacing for column analysis. The designer has the option to select full, none, at bridging spacing, or various predetermined bridging spacings. 
There is also the ability to type the bridging spacing directly into the input window. The lateral and torsional bracing spacings can be set dependent on the max wall bridging spacing or independently. One thing to keep in mind with the design of shear wall column bracing is the larger compression loads that can be developed, especially with a taller shear wall stack. A conservative approach would be to design the columns unbraced. Lastly, set the distortional buckling rotational stiffness value. Usually, if this value is unknown, it should be set to zero. Next, under deflection requirements, we'll make the selection for allowable interstory drift for seismic load and allowable lateral deflection for wind load. These inputs can be selected from drop lists. Following the deflection inputs are the loads. Dead, live, wind, seismic, and snow and roof live loads can be applied to each joint of the stiff wall panel system. In this example, we will add dead load and use auto calculate option to calculate the dead load used to offset the uplift forces. This will set the tributary width to the stiff wall column to the same spacing as a typical stud and assign the appropriate dead load. The other option for this calculation is a user-defined tributary width for the column, where the user selects a distance for the dead load assignment. We will continue with the application of wind and seismic loads. Next, our seismic requirements can be set. Start by adding the building risk category and the seismic design category. The response modification factor and system overstrength factor are auto-populated based on the values of the X-brace system in the IBC. It should be noted that the AISI S213 gives guidance on the value of the response modification factor for different seismic design categories with regard to special seismic detailing requirements. The last input parameter is the foundation anchorage. This can be chosen to be design or not. If the anchorage is selected to be designed, then the compressive strength of concrete foundation and the reduction factors for anchor tensile and shear strength must be set. Because this smart system produces a simple anchor check, the designer would need to verify the design of anchorage. Now we can design the system by pressing the run button. The design summary will appear showing the design ratios for the components of the design. In our example, the design is safe for capacities and serviceability. We can review each output section by going through the tabs down the left side. Starting with members, the software shows the design column the actual and allowable forces on the column, and the design bracing. Results are also given for the actual and allowable forces present in the members. The user can also view the deflections at each floor level. The Connections Output tab shows the design boot, the column connection to the boot, and the floor-to-floor -floor anchors or foundation anchors. Again, the actual and allowable forces are shown. They are shown for the boots, the column-to-boot connections, and the foundation connections. The connection locations can be viewed by selecting the tabs across the top of the window.
Next, we can review the factored and unfactored reaction on each joint in the design. The unfactored reactions for each load case can be selected from the pull-down menu. The designer is able to view the axial force and elastic deflection diagrams for each low type of low combination. These can be viewed by selecting the different criteria in the stiff fall model off to the right in the main window. Finally, we can review and export input and output data in the report module. Still Smart System 8.0 now allows the user to show and hide different sections of the report using checkboxes. Once the pertinent sections are inserted into the report, the user can go through the steps to print report as PDF or also save report. If any design changes are required, we can return to the input data, unlock the inputs, and make the changes. To resolve, we just change the inputs and solve the system again. Once a satisfactory design is produced, the design is complete. This now concludes the Still Smart System Stiff Wall Design Tutorial. For more of the latest information and tutorials for Still Smart System version 8.0, please visit www.stillsmartsystem.com.